the shank, the Lucy locket, the hosel rocket, the septic tank, no, that's something else. The pile of what? Okay, we'll stop there. And we're gonna have a look at why you might shank it. There are two ways and give you a bunch of fixes. Let's take a look. Right, there's good news and bad news. The good news is there are only two ways you're gonna shank it. The bad news is you probably don't know quite which one you are just yet. But let's have a look at the anatomy of a shank, shall we? Right, so essentially the ball comes off the heel of the club, right? Sweet spot is too far outside the golf ball. So the sweet spot of the club is shifted out too far this way at some point in the downswing, all right? But the thing is, the sweet spot could move out from in to out, so it's traveling very much this way for too long, or the sweet spot could move out early on top of the target line on a downswing and never make it back in far enough. Okay, so you've got two completely opposing directions, both leading to contact in the heel. All right, so step one is to find out which one of those you are. A very quick, very simple test. Uh, this is the golf ball you're gonna play. This golf ball is outside the ball target line. It has to be enough so that you could actually strike it without touching it. If your path was good, and it needs to be two or three golf balls back away from the target. Now, if you're able to hit a shank and not hit the golf ball on the outside, you're an inside out shanker. Okay, if you may, you gotta be careful with the language. If your sweet spot out early, you're inevitably gonna catch this golf ball, probably with the toe end of the club, maybe even more of it before you get to the golf ball you're striking. So there's a very quick and simple way to figure out which kind of shanker you are. There are always gonna be mechanical reasons why the shanks occur. And I'm saying shanks a lot, and it's a bit of an unwritten rule that you don't say it, but I have to say it in this video, I apologize. There are some real old school drills you can do, all right? And they are mainly external focuses which is something that you can probably use more on the golf course versus the practice ground where it's okay to go internal to think a little bit more technically, right? So this kind of thing may be more of a golf course focus. Um, although having said that, you can't do the drills on the golf course because it requires obstacles in the way. And the first one, if you're an in-to-out shanker, is to put a golf ball inside the ball target line. Again, what this is gonna do is remove the possibility that you come in too far from the inside and move the sweet spot out, right? If you're able to miss this golf ball on the inside, chances are this club is gonna be arcing inwards from there. It would be pretty tough to miss this first ball and still send the sweet spot too far right. It'd be pretty late pushing going on. Okay, so in order to remove the in to out shank, put a golf ball inside. Do your best to miss it. Do your best to miss it. You might clip it just on the inside, but that's fine you're never gonna shank it. Now, the obvious alternative is to go golf ball on the outside to shift your path more into out, right? So, if you're one of these guys, sweet spot goes out, never comes in again, stays down that way. Golf ball here, it's gonna force you to be more inside out. And you are much less likely to ever shank a ball if you can miss that obstacle golf ball again. Right, draw number two, little T gate. Um, so what a T either side, there's maybe half an inch to the outside of the toe of the club. This one is pushed in lower, obviously because the club's on an angle, it actually gets closer to the ground over here. This tee needs to be lower, we will catch it. And essentially, you're just gonna sit the ball just ahead of the tee gate, try and strike the ball, miss the tees. It'd be pretty tough if you can miss the tees. I say tough, impossible to shank it. So there's a couple of external focuses to help you to avoid getting a sweet spot too far outside, either late or early. We're gonna go internal. So internal is more, what am I moving where? Here's the thing about shanks. It can only happen if the club head is getting further away from you at some point, whether it's early or late. And that club head getting further away typically, not always, but typically, is driven by the path of your hands in the downswing. Again, if your club goes out early, chances are your hands are moving out and away from you early. If it moves out late, may well be in and then pushing down the target line, or even to the right of the target line for too long. Okay, so essentially moving this end of the club further from you early or late is gonna shift this out and you're gonna hit the heel of the club. Okay, so regardless of which one you are, focusing on distance that the butt of the club is from you is gonna reduce the opportunity for the club head to move out too far. Right now, it might end up being, let's just focus on the butt of the club. So it looks something like this. I'll try and keep it relatively close on the backswing, then I'm gonna try and keep it close all the way down. Now what that means is it's gonna curve around me. Okay, it's not gonna go straight down the target line, which would be very much a pushing, driving motion. 
Obviously, people are taught to chip that way. It's not great. Um, and it's certainly not right of target. Okay, so I'm trying to keep this relatively close. Semi-external focus, as in it's club related, but we're trying to do it to prevent something as far as where the hands are traveling. Let's take a quick look. So we're gonna go in, close, keep it in, keep turning. If anything, if you did this well, the strike would be towards the toe. So really moving inwards, close, staying inwards, turning the whole way through. Okay, if you wanted to go a level deeper and say, right, movement wise, what's making my, my butt of my club or my club head move out too soon? I'm gonna give you two options. First off, it could be your right arm straightening early. All right, but that would be unusual in that that would be you pushing the club this way behind the golf ball. Your focus, remember, most of the time is gonna be over there. All right, so the late shank or the into out, that's usually more of a drive and push towards target. So the handle of the club and the end of the club never curve back inwards. For the player who gets kind of the early out in the shank, it tends to be more driven by the right shoulder and right hip, maybe right side of the body, moving over the top of the golf ball. All right, the typical slicer's pattern. So in that instance, you'd really need to feel like as you transition, the right shoulder, if anything, lowers and stays back just that split second before it then comes around. Now, if you take too much of this and exaggerate it for too long, what is gonna happen? Gonna to go too far into out. It's just transition. So trying to keep the right shoulder back and down just for a split second before you then turn through towards target should be enough to prevent the club coming over the top. Okay, so no issue at all there. For the more into-out shanker, you've already got to be looking at spacing of the butt of the club, length of the elbows, through impact, and into the finish. Now, finishing with the butt of the club to your left, absolutely fine. That's really going to pull the sweet spot inwards, away from that shank position. But the word warning is you could finish left, but still wide, and that width comes from pushing, so the sweet spot may well have still got out there. You want to combine both things. A little left side finish, with both elbows pulled in, flex, and the butt of the club really close to your left hip. Again, if you overdo it, the strike should be toe end. So I'm going for a left finish with the butt of the club really close to me. All right, you can see the impact on the face. It's just right of center. Absolutely no problem. So that's your quick shank fix. We've got external focus and drills for we'll internal stuff as to what's moving and what's important. Please like, subscribe. We'll get more content to you if you do.